Hello everybody and welcome back to RimWorld. It's spring. We're trying a couple different crops this year. We're growing some cotton. We're growing some corn. Um, of course, in order to supplement that, we are also hunting um, some meat in the meantime because we may run out of food before we get uh, our first harvest of corn. It does take a little while to grow. Uh, we are currently in the process of building our new temple that's going to be our center for like religious rituals and spaces like that. Um, it's Most of the walls have been built already but it still has plenty of mining that needs to get done. And we don't have mining as a high priority for very many people so production is just kind of stalled here. I want to go check mining and maybe set it as a higher priority for certain people. Um, right now I have Minyaka setting to constructing, hauling, then cleaning. Uh, sorry, constructing, hauling, then mining, then cleaning. Maybe we move Minyaka to do some mining before con uh, hauling. I think Minyaka though is probably recovering from that last raid, so I'm surprised she's not in bed. Oh yeah, I just remembered we don't have bed rest set as a priority for many of our colonists So we, we're having them work through their pain um, And I think we're gonna keep it that way for just a little bit longer because we can't really afford Having them um, sitting in bed doing nothing when they're sick What is she doing? What is she carrying? She's hauling like half of a dead body here Gross All right, there's a new quest called toxin problem High Stellar Petronia Ducieri of the Empire of God has a special request. Somebody has dumped an abundance of to toxic waste packs near one of her settlements and she's unable to safely store them. If you accept, Petronia will deliver 105 toxic waste packs by transport pod. If not kept frozen, toxic wa waste packs will dissolve over time, polluting nearby terrain. Um, I definitely do not want to deal with that. Okay. Well, we're going to just let that quest expire. Okay, I don't think we really have the time to do any of these quests right now. I think we just need to focus on survival. Survival is still the biggest threat to our, our colony. All these rocks, though, could stand with getting hauled. Tronka, your house is disgusting. Please clean it. You have to get out of bed and wake up early to do this one. I cannot believe that you guys are living in such a pigsty. We do have cleaning pretty low on everyone's priorities. I wonder if it would be worth having one colonist at this place just dedicated whose like primary responsibilities are just hauling and cleaning first. Uh, we might get somebody in to do that eventually, if not sooner rather than later. We have visitors coming to visit. I said visit too many times in that sentence. A group from the Pact of Born. They seem to have a few items to trade. Okay, Jay, go see what's up with the, these people. Let's go see what they're willing to trade. Okay, um, Tronka is currently working on trying to convert Worm. Um, I don't think it really matters. Worm's not going to be here permanently, so we don't really need to try to convert him. Um, there is a book here we might want to buy. Let's see, in this passable, in this passable findings, an, uh, an old antique dealer unfolds a tribal myth of an ancient god of rage whose influence touches all people. Um, okay, so this gives us biofera extraction as a research, um, and it also ha gives us a chance of having a mental break when reading this textbook. So that's a dangerous book. We definitely don't want to be buying that one. Um, is there any like steel that we could buy? Um, we could definitely keep up with herbal medicine. We could buy like three more. Um, I don't think we need any components or anything like that. Okay, nothing really interesting to trade there. At least we're getting some research done. I'm surprised. It's not even winter time and Tronka has spare, spare time to do research. Now is Tronka prioritizing research over like hauling and cleaning? He is. 
So that means Olga's got to be doing hauling and cleaning right now. Okay. As long as somebody's doing it. There's plenty of stuff to get done at this colony. So this episode, I'm actually interested in maybe trying to get a Guaranlin seed uh, going for ourselves here. Now, I believe that these trees can be planted anywhere. Let me make sure. A large, distinctive-looking tree with a unique life cycle. Each Guaranlin tree contains a, no a non-conscious dryad queen. The queen births creatures called dryads which guard and tend the tree. In exchange, the tree nurtures its protectors by feeding them directly. From the outside, it appears the dryads are created by the tree directly and act as a part of it. It is possible for a person to form a connection with the tree and partially control the dryads it produces. Okay, um, I don't think there's any restrictions on where we can place it. So I'm going to go ahead and place a tree kind of... Oh, I guess we can't have any buildings in in the vicinity of it. Okay, that's good to know. It doesn't it doesn't want to be near any buildings. You know where we could put it though. It's right in the middle of our stockpile. That's kind of an ugly place. Maybe we make like a nice little um a nice little location out of it. Yeah, like down here. Let's make a nice little kind of grove location. And we're gonna set probably Tronka, I would think, to take care of it. A child named Kyra is crashing in a transport pod nearby. Kyra is suffering from paralytic abasia and will be unable to walk. She will recover naturally after many days. There is also a chance of a lucky quick recovery. Paralytic abasia can also be cured by a special operation, which requires a large amount of Glitter World medicine. She is willing to contribute once she is recovered, but will not leave voluntarily. If you don't want Kyra, you can banish her, sell her into slavery, or leave her to die. However, you and your other colonists might find this disturbing. Okay, before we decide to accept a new person into our colony, let's check out what this Kyra person is all about. So, let's jump to the location. Here's Kyra. She's nine years old. She, her only trait is being psychically hypersensitive. And she has no passions for anything. Um, and very little skill at anything whatsoever. And she's going to be sick, so she's not really going to be able to learn too much. Hmm. But, I mean, she could potentially be great for us, you know? I say we save her. Okay, so what we're going to need to do if we want to save Kyra, I think this will be fun. More fun to save her than to just leave her to die. She won't be like the most ideal colonist, but we can have her on hauling and cleaning and something. We just said we needed that. So we're going to create a temporary sleeping, speaking, ah, sleeping space for her until we can find more permanent arrangements. Um, she's a teenager, so she probably wants a room of her own. She probably doesn't need to be living in a house with like another adult. Um, so for now, we're just going to create orders, furniture. We have a bedroll, right? Yeah. Let's go ahead and install this bedroll. And... You know what? We don't need a prison cell right now. Let's go ahead and say this is for colonists. And let's go ahead and assign this to her. Minyaka, I'm gonna let you handle the rescue operation. We want to accept her in. And Minyaka, go ahead and rescue her. Bring her in. She can sleep in the prison, the makeshift prison cell, until we find a place for her. I'm thinking we have our Garland pod right there. A nice place for her house might be right here, down here. Okay. Let's go ahead and um, 
do we have enough wood for this? We really don't have enough wood to be building a new house right now. Let's build it out of limestone. Okay. We're getting raided. A group of outlanders have arrived from nearby. Okay, we're gonna have to put building your house on hold, Kyra. They're coming at us with auto pistols. Looks like I see some rifles, bolt action rifles. Oh boy. There's only three of them though. They've got bolt action rifles, two of them, and one, one of them has an auto pistol. Okay, so we definitely wanna find cover for this raid or else we're gonna get all shot up and killed. As far as I can tell, I only see the three people there, so this is a smaller raid, but they're coming with guns, which still makes it more dangerous, even though it's not one of the larger raids. So, I'm going to go ahead and recruit everybody, and let's go ahead and find a nice place for cover. I think, let's try to move everyone up here if we can. Yep, this will be a good place to find cover. Worm can go there, Minyaka can go somewhere here, perfect. Okay, this is going way too fast for my liking. Okay, now I need to make sure Crowbar stays inside. We don't want Crowbar getting hurt for this raid. Worm should go ahead and rush them. I think we also want to rush, rush Stench. What a name. Stench. Okay. Worm, I want you to go get Xenophyte. And what are you doing, Trina? Okay, Minyaka, I want you to go get Xenophyte as well. Um, there are three gunmen. I want, I want us to go here and get ready to attack Trina. Okay. Trina should be fleeing. Are any of these people people that we may want to recruit? Anybody good at mining? Okay. Gwendy is currently bleeding out, but we could save her. She is a psychopath. Uh, yikes. <laughs> I don't like that. She's actually has a minor passion for a lot of different skills, which is a desirable trait. But she's not good at the one thing we really want, which is mining. So, and I think medical we're also poor at. So she could be a good doctor, but I just I don't think it's worth it unless they're good at mining and medical. Um, they have a bunch of good weapons, though. We will take the good auto pistol, the good heavy SMG, and the the good bolt action rifle. I'm wondering if it's actually time for us to transition our. Um, I wonder if it's time for us to transition our colonists to using guns instead of bows. Is anybody going to put out this fire? Um, Minyaka? I'm pretty sure firefighting should be like a priority for everybody. Uh, Worm, can you like do something about this? Worm is incapable of firefighting. Olga, come on, people. I have firefight as like priority one for everybody. I don't know what they're doing. In fact, firefighting can be priority one for the child as well. No, the child is too young. Okay, Olga, I need you to extinguish these fires. There you guys go. Okay. Where were we? We were planning a new house. We're planning a new house for Kyra. I think the new house might be nice to have here. So I think we'll go ahead and plan it out. Okay, we have gone ahead and put the plans down and actually that's gonna mean that our tree is um, too close to a uh, build, built structure, so I'm ordering us to cut the plant because we have we have another backup uh, sprout as well that we can use, and I think our new one we will probably build a little smarter away from everything else, so we can, for example, 
put it here next to our ranch. And this way it won't be near any buildings or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our, our tree out here. This one is gonna get cut down because I don't think we need this necessarily. And this is gonna be our new house. Kyra had a growth moment. We can choose a trait for Kyra to learn. Kyra has a new nickname, Tomboy, Kyra Winters. Um, she's now old enough to do the following work. We can give her the traits fast walker, masochist, or jealous. Well, we definitely don't want this or this, so let's give her fast walker. That's that's a decent trait. Um, we can't give her any like passions or anything, so we're just going to leave it like that. All right, we've got a tomboy now in the colony. She's got green hair, bright green hair. Welcome, Kyra. She's had paralytic abasia for 33 days. Or maybe it's 33 days left, not sure. Okay, so the shuttle has arrived to collect worm. So we're gonna go ahead and load worm up. Worm, it was nice having you here. Farewell. And as a reward, we have gotten a demon's blackjack, which I think is a book. Yeah, we've got three books. Oh, I'm so excited. We've got books. We've got books. Okay, um, who's gonna haul this? Minyaka, I want you to hold, hold one. Tronka, I want you to haul the other one. Jay, I want you to haul the other one. Let's go. Let's get these books onto the bookshelf. Oh wow, look at this. These books. So, what are these books good for? A Demon's Blackjack is a recreational book, so people will fulfill the recreation by reading it. Secrets of Intellectual Inquiry is improving the intellectual skill. Breakthrough in Carpet Making researches carpet making. All right, fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and finish plans for construction of our rec room over here. This might be kind of small for a rec room, so we might expand it out and make it bigger in the future. Um, but I wanna move the reading into the rec room, not into the classroom. As much as I love having books in the classroom, the fact of the matter is, is that people go to read it and they read it at the school desk, which I think might be blocking Crowbar from getting lessons when he needs it. So if people are gonna read for recreation, I'd rather have them do it next door. It's right next door to the classroom. It's still close enough, close for, for learning. So Minyaka's awake again, and I'm actually gonna have her pause her construction, and I'm gonna have her try to convert Tomboy. Because currently Tomboy is following the Rogian way. There we go. A couple more of those and she'll be converted. I'm realizing uh, we don't have a wooden floor here, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this missing wooden floor. We're going to need a doorway. So I'm gonna go to structure, wooden door, and we're gonna need a doorway for this hallway. I think we can have an entrance to the hallway here, and we can have an entrance to the hallway here. We're also gonna want an entrance uh, to the rec room. I think we'll put it right there. Okay, now we wanna connect this tree with somebody. I think we're going to connect it with, this is gonna suck up a lot of whoever's time we assign to it. So our two people with high plant skills are Tronka and Jay. Um, Olga also has pretty high plant skills, so we could potentially put it on Olga to do. I kinda like the idea actually of Olga doing this. Because Olga's other primary responsibilities are just like crafting, which he can do after he's done caring for the tree. Okay, Olga, so we're going to go ahead and begin a tree connecting ritual. And Olga's going to connect. Here we go. I see this happening over here, but I don't want to interrupt the ritual. 
Okay, so there is a Guaranlin tree connection. Olga is connected with the tree. The tree will produce small animals called dryads by growing them in pods at its base. These dryads can specialize into different castes. You can choose which cast of dryads you want the tree to produce. The stronger the connection between the tree and the human, the more dryads the tree can sustain. Olga can strengthen the connection by pruning the tree. Maintaining a higher connection strength requires more frequent pruning. Okay, so let's try to maintain 50%. That's going to be four and a half hours a day on for Olga. Okay, that seems worth doing. Now, as far as the casts go, we can have one that produces like herbal medicine for us. We can have one that produces wood for us. I think these ones are really tough, so they can distract raiders attacking these things that are really tough. They can take a lot of blows. These things um, are very dangerous, so they can help us fight raiders and they can like help us fight alongside us. These guys can produce berries as things. These people can haul things around the base. I think we're going to create a wood maker. I'm tired of chopping out all the trees. Okay. So we're going to create woodmaker dryads that are going to produce us a steady income of wood to the colony so we don't have to keep deforesting the entire world just to get what we need. And I think we're going to go ahead and end the episode here. We've had a real successful episode. We've pretty much finished building Tomboy's new house. We just need to put a bed in it, some furniture, some floors down, and it'll be ready to go. She's going to have the first house with stone walls, which is also exciting. Uh, we have a new Guaranlin tree that's going to be stewarded by Olga. So we're excited to see where that goes. That'll help save us some time chopping wood all the time. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you all in the next episode.